It's Halloween, boys and ghouls, and the fur is about to fly. Because we watch Ginger Snaps, and we can see your gunch on... B Movie, Movie Mania! Mania. <laughs> Quick takes! Welcome, everybody, to B-Movie Mania. I am your host for this Halloween spooktacular. And with me here is my fur baby, Mike Hayes. Fur baby? Well, you know, you're you're dressed like a dog. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Hi. Hi. Mike, do you have any candy over there for Halloween? Uh... Yeah, sort well, sort of. I have I have my uh, usual Malort, of course, liquid candy for <sighs> for you. Yep, and I have a little something here in my glass. I have a skull, nice skull glass. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That's like a skull chalice there. Oh, it's a skull chalice, and guess what? I have a white claw. All right. That has become blood red. <laughs> oh, very spooky. That's very spooky. Yes. Let's see. I love it. Let's see how grenadine and white claw tastes. <laughs> That's fine. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have, I have a, I don't have booze, but I have a Yeti. Co- I mean, it's kind of Ooh. a monster. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, let, me, let me take a drink here. Also, I, I have the traditional candy corn. So I apologize if you hear this. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'll put, or, or just me chewing is probably great too. Yeah. Nice. To minimize the rustling for our listeners, I will put a little pile here. How? I do not apologize for the chewing. How considerate of you. <laughs> so, we watched Ginger Snaps, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time you've ever seen this movie. Yeah, first time I'd ever, somehow, ever seen any of the Ginger Snaps films. I was late to the party as well. Um, You know, and I know another one of our hosts, Paul, is a big fan of Ginger Snaps, and he actually left us a voicemail. So if oh. if I may, let's just get to this right now. Yeah, go for it. I'll just... Uh... Hey, Jay. Hey, Mike. This is Paul Brooks. I heard you guys are doing Ginger Snaps. I love Ginger Snaps, dude. Woo! Ginger Snaps! Woo! 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 Cool movie! Ginger Snaps! Did you cut that off? Uh, no, that oh. was the end. That, that was, was his... that was the whole thing. That was it. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> very enthusiastic he is. Very enthusiastic. Yes. Loves his ginger snaps. So, yeah. Mike, I guess my first question tonight: um, Are you feeling more like a ginger or more like a Bridget? Hmm. Well, right now in this uh, doggy outfit, I feel mm-hmm. like those poor dogs in this movie. <laughs> but I like to wear this out for Halloween or for other events. I'll wear this this Wilfred costume I've got out. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a Bridget. No, not a Bridget. A ginger. A ginger? I feel like a ginger. That makes a lot of sense. I have this cheetah costume on. Mm-hmm. My wife loves to dress me up in this thing. What are you talking? Wait, hold on. Are you gonna about to do a kink tank? Kink tank. No, no, I'm not. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. I think she just likes to laugh at me when I put this on. So See, I said this is probably a great costume <laughs> to uh, wear for our Halloween specials. It's so. fucking great. I love it. It's thanks. I got the cute little cheetah hat here. Uh huh. My and you can't see it and. But uh, the the feet are actually cheetah heads. So you're some you're not so much a cheetah, more of like a Voltron of sorts. Yeah, like like or cheetah meets society. That's oh. what I am. I'm a oh. bunch of shunting cheetahs oh. basically for Halloween. 
Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. But, I like shunting. But it's cute. I mean, it's it's just more like cute. Though, hey, maybe maybe after we talk about ginger snaps, you and I could uh, see what this shunt looks like. I am completely sickened. Mike, you got a IMDb synopsis for us? Of course I do. Uh, two death-obsessed sisters, outcasts in their own suburban neighborhood, must deal with the tragic consequences when one of them is bitten by a deadly werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> and you know... <laughs> I will tell you that one of the reasons I was late to the party on Ginger Snaps is because I thought this was a very different kind of movie. Same. Th- than what it was. I thought this was like, I don't know, like a teen. What? What? what well, maybe you have a comparison. Like you, you said you have the same feeling. Like, I feel like it was just like like teen cheese or something I, with that's like a little scary. I like, I thought it was supposed to be on the sexier side, you know. Go I you know wild things territory or something like that. I don't know. I didn't know what it was going to be. I just assumed. I assumed because a certain friend of ours who is obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. I assumed it was going to be more TNA. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I thought that, but like maybe, okay, maybe more like Final Destination kind of stuff. Okay. Cause, you know, that's got like the, all the good looking young people that, you know, the pretty people with pretty people problems that, that die. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I, I thought that's what it is. Not at all. This Ginger Snap, no, Ginger Snap. Not, not, not even close. No, and I think maybe also like the cutesy title, like Ginger Snaps, mm, you know, like, <sighs> yeah, the, that also reinforced the belief in me that it was like going to be kind of cheesy. Yeah, let's let's I'm glad you brought that up. The title's bad. It's it's a it's an un- snappy. It's not to be funny, but it's it's like a snappy title. Like, well, it has nothing to do with the movie. Well, she does snap. Yeah, but it's it's such a lazy pun. <laughs> it is. It, it yes. is. The title is, is a lazy. Part. There, there is nothing about it that is, it's not required. It's not. A, it, it's just. It's literally the title. Eh, it's a lazy pun. I don't like the title. It's a bad title. Fair. I don't know what you'd Fair. call it. But it's just the rest of the movie is well more. Uh, it's way better than that title leads on to. I well, must say. I, I it almost feels like somebody came up with the title and then named the character that you know like, yeah Ginger could be named anything in the movie there's nothing and I mean it's just a name like she could be anything but mm-hmm. someone thought oh Ginger snaps wouldn't that be a cool name for a movie let's name mm-hmm. her Ginger okay now what's the movie yeah. Ginger could be the the movie could be about a girl who it turns into a vampire or is just a killer or yeah the title could fit any plot there's nothing specific to like werewolves or anything about it. No. If no. that's and, something that you're looking for. Yeah. And that's fine. But that is another reason I didn't check out the movie before either. To me, Ginger Snaps just kind of, and you see like the two women on the cover and you see, I just think there's, there's two women are going to go murder a bunch of people or something. I, I, I didn't, you know, except I didn't know what right. it was. Yep. And, I, and I'm, I'm sorry. You. Because it's good. Yeah. I think it's a really good movie. Something is really, really wrong with me, <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I get, I get this ache, and uh, I thought it was for sex, but it's to tear everything into fucking pieces. <laughs> I watched this twice, and the the first time I watched it, I was I was uh, admittedly a little inebriated. And so okay. I, I, it wasn't keeping my attention as much. I, I enjoyed it, but I was kind of, I found myself getting on the phone kind of bullshit like that. Right. Okay. But second time through. Fuck yeah, man. Like it, it really, it, I missed some of the key points in it the first time through. And then the second time I'm watching this thing and I'm like, this is a fucking straight up like dope ass fucking cool I mean, it's a feminist film championed mm-hmm. by many, many people. Uh, and I can see why it's just, it's cool. It's, it, it, it subverts a lot of normal things that you see in a horror film. 
and does it well. He does it fun. And some of the stuff that is cheesy, yeah, it's fun cheesy. It, it prov- provides a commentary on what the world teaches young women. Mm-hmm. Um, and outright says it. In yeah. In fact, um, at one point, Bridget and Ginger, when they're they're going to just run away from it all, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do. At one point, Ginger says, No one ever thinks chicks do shit like this. Trust me, a girl can only be a slut, a bitch, tease, or the virgin next door. We'll just coast on how the world works. The movie is kind of describing or is taking a stance on what the world is teaching young women. Like, you have to Mm -hmm. exist in these boxes. And Ginger is trying to take advantage of it, I guess, at one point. Yes. The, uh, the film writer, the, 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 the author of this film is Karen Walton, who, who's gone on to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, notably, she's written on Orphan Black with the director who co-created Orphan Black, um, very popular Canadian series. But um, yeah, she she said I, I I listened to some DVD commentary. She talks about uh, just yeah wanting to subvert that, and and it compares a lot of the transformation of this monster to what a a young person going through puberty is like specifically. Uh, a, a young woman going through that process. And, and I don't think either of us are, are the people to talk about such a thing or at least not knowledgeably. Um, having you mean talk about thick syrupy voluminous <laughs> discharge, a thick syrupy voluminous discharge is not uncommon. Yeah. I mean, okay. It depends the only reason on which I say one. that is because a uh, spoiler, that's going to be my rating scale. So I just wanted to get that in there to provide context. The nurse talks about that when Ginger is concerned about mm-hmm. getting her period. Sure. So I know that's great rating scale. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just think it's cool. I think it's great. And then there was a lot of intent on that. And I, there's a lot of metaphor and themes to it. And I, it's, it's, it seems to be done very well and it doesn't take away either. Some people shy away from stuff with commentary like that because they're like, Oh, that's all it's going to be. It's just a preachy movie. And it's not, it's just a fucking yeah. dope ass monster movie. That draws a lot of parallels. It's fucking cool. Right. And basic plot, broad strokes, is that um, Ginger gets, at one point, torn up by a werewolf and starts mm-hmm. to change. And her sister, Bridget, is trying to save her. Yep. I mean, that's the most sort of most basic boil it down kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just thought the whole tone of the movie worked. It's more grounded and low budget feeling, um, which I really appreciated. It also has like a, uh, like a, I, I kept, you know, it's got the angsty, the, the main, our protagonists oh. are like these angsty goth kind of into the macabre girls, kind of the craft zone or whatever kind of thing, you know, essential goth girls. I mean, uh, Emily Perkins. Is yeah. Well, like, yeah. You can't get more pouty than she is in the movie <laughs> as Bridget. Like, she's so, like, everything. And I saw some uh, interview stuff with her, and she was talking about how, like, the, the sort of, like, the layers of her performance, because she had to act like this person who was acting, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the character of Bridget is putting up this front with how she treats the world and sees yeah, the world. Yeah. And that comes through in her facial expressions, you know, oh yeah, fantastic. All the way. Like it's it was great. Like the two of them, the chemistry between the two is really strong. Mm-hmm. I thought. Want me to kill her? I'll kill her for you, B. Whatever. No, not whatever. This isn't whatever. Seriously, what about torture? Anything you want. Yeah, they def and she definitely Bridget specifically just keeps like her confidence builds throughout. Like she eventually has to has to like pick up the slack and win, like somehow save her sister effectively too. And it's not the whole movie isn't like a a we're trying to fight this monster. It's a I'm trying to save my sister, and mm-hmm. kind of a movie. It's uh, it's 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 a nice take on that too. 
but it's yeah, yeah. she definitely she does such a good job with her performance. It's it's great. They're both obsessed with death in the beginning. Mm-hmm. They're both um they've both got like a suicide pact. So they're they're pre- some pretty grim characters. Yeah. And they made the suicide pact at age 8. I mean, we didn't have ours until at least 12. 12, I mean, right? I was going to say 12. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But they do say girls make suicide packs earlier than It's boys. true. Yeah, they're more mature. So, yeah. So. so. What are you going to do? It's the pact. See, it's easy for you. You don't care. We swore we'd go together one way or another. When we were eight? So? Out by 16 or dead in the scene, but together forever. Yeah, so they're real tight. And then throughout the whole movie, as Ginger starts changing slowly and things start happening to her um, toward the next full moon, um, they grow more distant and even as they're growing more distant bridget is trying to save like you said save her rope Mm -hmm. her back in try to stay close and she ginger keeps pushing her away yeah so yeah it's the whole even like the the concept of the villain in the movie is different than what you might expect there isn't really there's different sort of villainous characters but it's really ginger and the transformation mm-hmm. she's going through, it's sort of like she's the unwilling villain, in a sense. Yeah. Well, like, the villain, the villains, the other villains in it are, like, bullies. Oh, my God, I'm sweating so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> These costumes. We, next, next year, we need, like, we need slutty costumes next year. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe our listeners could provide some ideas. What slutty costumes would you like to see mm. us in? Uh, I don't, maybe this is a bad idea. I'll be a hot nurse. <laughs> I'll be a hot Chester Cheeto. Uh, no, but the, like the bullies in it are your normal world bullies, right? Because mm. it takes the place. Boys. Hmm? The boys. The boys. They're trying to, they're trying oh, to be yeah. mean. They're, oh, yeah. They're I guess it's, it's, high, it's high school bullies and the patriarchy um, yeah. are the villains of the film. And. Now, okay. Go ahead, because you're leading me right into something. And it's well, that's what I'm here for, Jay. This is why we made that death pact when we were 12. <laughs> it's either we do a podcast about B-movies or... Or we're done. Just... Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, the, so the you know, our, our, our two main women, uh, Ginger and Bridget, are picked on and they're teased. And then, you know, by both their peer, their their female peers, and then the, the dudes who are just, you know, being dick bag, you know, high school boys just right. trying to get in their pants and call them names and, you know, whatever. So, yes, you're talking about the patriarchy mm-hmm. and how they live within that. One mm-hmm. of the only places where, like, that seems to be flipped is at home. Yes. And Mimi Rogers is the girl's mother the dad he, he i think he has one line in the whole movie he's there mm-hmm. he sits there but he has he's powerless he doesn't want to be part of it even like no he doesn't want to be part of anything yeah but one of the main things is and i think you're getting at this sort of thing or showing the power dynamic is that that bo- it, it comes known that both girls their sisters if we haven't said that uh are ha- neither have had their period and so right. That's something that mom keeps bringing up because that's obviously like a big part in a in a a part that you want to be supported for for something when that happens, um, and so the mom keeps kind of mentioning it. And the dad's just like, I don't want to hear anything about it. I'm just it, when it eventually it happens and the mom celebrates it with a uh, disgustingly ironic angel food cake with <laughs> lots of dripping uh, strawberry, <laughs> strawberry juice all over juices. it. <laughs> Ginger is so now happy about it. <laughs> Ginger's very favorite. Congratulations, sweetie. You know you can ask me anything. You're so dead. I didn't. Our little girl's a young woman now. Uh, that's actually the thing that's that really drives the wedge in them too. Is the is that cake because <laughs> Ginger is like, oh, Bridget, you told mom. Yeah. And she's like, no, I didn't. I didn't. And uh, yeah, so it, the cake was something. Yeah. <laughs> but. But so the mom is clearly in charge of the family. Absolutely. And this is my biggest question. And it frustrates me a little bit. Mm. Let me see if I can help you release it. All right. Was mom a werewolf? Mm. 
That's pretty good special effect. It was great. That's going to be great for the listeners. <laughs> um, I, I didn't even think about that. Really? I couldn't get it out of my mind. Here's why, if I may. Please. There's almost every line... If you ever go back and watch this, just pay attention to her actual dialogue. Okay. Almost every line of dialogue says she knows exactly what's going on with Ginger. Because yeah, she's in the shower. Ginger's in the shower kind of freaking out. And mom just storms right in. One of the lines is... You don't have anything I haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Subtle, mm-hmm. but it's there. Yeah. Later, um, the dad is talking about things and she t- the mom says, stay in your own little world. This one confuses you. When she's talking to the girls. Hmm. Um, she happens... Okay, so they establish in the movie um, that monkshood is this plant that you can synthesize a cure from, or at least that's the theory. Yeah. Okay. And it's a really hard plant to get, especially in the area that they live in. It was out of season even like, even if they could get it, it was out of season. It's the whole thing. When they need it, who's got it. Mom has a bundle of it laying on the table. Yeah. But why? Wait, out of because nowhere, she's you're a saying werewolf. That. She synthesizes it and makes her own to keep her urges down. I think. I wonder if that's now, the sequel. It, that's the only thing that would make sense. I was wondering how they would do a sequel with this, but that would make sense if that's what they did. Because I just I'm, thought, they don't. I just they thought don't. it was all, you know, it's because it, the film is also about uh, sisterhood and supporting women, supporting women, and stuff like that. Like that's the other t- story of it yeah. right and so that's well, what i kind of thought was going on but i was probably hooked into the whole like feminist kind of uh metaphors and, and non-metaphors even that we're going through which is it. fine so i might have missed some of that so so but okay yeah the girls murder the 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 female bully trina yes and in the act of murdering her a couple of her fingers come off in the yard yeah now, the dad finds the fingers immediately when the dad's like, oh, my God, what is this? Look at this. The mom runs over, picks them up, and clearly they're real. The mom knows they're real because she treats them as real later. Yeah. In that scene, she picks them up and goes, Henry, for Pete's sake, it's for the girl's death project. Ah. The fake, you big baby. Like, these are just for the girl's death project, because they take all these photos of themselves in different suicide-related poses. Did, yeah. She's did just de- like, honey, they're fake. They're fake. She finds Trina's body later, doesn't tell anybody, and in fact, intends to blow up the house with the dad in it. Straight up says it. Like, oh, he'll just blame me for everything going wrong. We'll just leave him in the house. Like, yeah. yeah. So she is on Team Ginger and Team Bridget. She's out for her daughters, no question. But when you add all this up, it just, I was like, for sure, the in the end of the film, the mom's going to come in and be like, I got this. Don't worry. So the key to me then, the key for me to believe you here mm-hmm. is that the finger scene, I don't remember, you know, word for word, shot for shot, is, is dad, does dad have a reason, is he suspicious of the girls or is he just fine as like, what's this in my lawn? He's, well, he's horrified. But yeah. then as soon as he's told, oh, they're fake, it's for the girl's project, then he's just like, oh, okay. But there's no mention of what have my girls done. It's mom just no. comes over and covers it up right away, seemingly right away. knowing they're real. Right. And, and mom then, goes digging later and finds the body. Yeah. And mom and, did. Oh, and she says, there's another thing that she says. Um, the dad says something to the effect of like, um, what are you doing? And she says like, oh, this reminds me of the old days. Or something like she has a line ref to mm. referencing the past, mm. but never extrapolates what it means. Oh, this okay. Is hot. Okay. Well, you're hot. <laughs> you're hot. Well, I am. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Ugh, let me just zip that down a little bit. All right. Okay. I didn't think of that, dude. I'm going to have to watch it again. And, 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 uh, you know, spoiler, I mean, Hey, the second movie, Ginger Snaps 2, is great. I think they're all good. You've personally. seen wait, you've I, seen two. 
I've seen two and three. Is Mama a werewolf in those? There is no... I, Mimi Rogers, I, I don't think, is even in the second one from mm-hmm. what I remember. So they go a total different direction. Like, well, they have focused, to. I mean, yeah, we haven't right. talked about the end of the film yet, but they literally have to go a different direction. Yes, and they do. The, it's hmm. not an entirely surprising direction, but it's still a great movie, I think. The second one is very good. And Interesting. I think holds the tone of the first one pretty well. And also stars... Um, I'm not going to get her name right. She's the star of Orphan Black. It stars her. Oh, which, Tatiana? You know, we talking about, yeah, Tatiana. It makes all the connections you were talking about. Oh. With, with her fantastic performance in recent Perry Mason episodes. And her upcoming performance as the She-Hulk. We are just chilling for Tatiana. She's fucking dope. She's a great, she's a great actor. She's a great actress. She's great. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, if, if we're, are we talking about the end? What? Well, sure. <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Jay? Hold on. Well, I'm, all, just the... I'm all ears. <laughs> Me too. Aww. Aww. Um, yeah, that was just my biggest thing was that the mom. I'm like, dude, the mom's got to be the werewolf. And it bugs huh. me because nowhere in any trivia or interviews or anything is it even brought up. And maybe that's for the best. It could be. That being the end of the movie would hurt the film. Because it's it's the mom coming in and saving the kids, right? Kind of a thing. Whereas right. now at the end of the movie, it's it's sister trying to save sister. Uh, the one guy, what's his name, Sam or whatever, comes in, tries to be a hero. He gets his ass fucking kicked bad. Um, and then it's and just he's a trooper, dude. He didn't have to do any of this. No, he did. Let's he just was, point out he was. He's well, in the plot because he wants to be. Well, he is, and he is weirdly knowledgeable about werewolves as well. That's true. Yes. He he just brings up werewolves sentence two of, of his introduction. <laughs> but it it but it that did come down to Bridget having to uh try to save with on her own accord, try to save her sister, which I think was an, a very powerful ending. Yes. I mean, I get it. You you don't want, it's tighter. You know, it's a sister versus sister movie the whole way. You don't want mom to swing in at the end and save everybody. But yeah. I'm not letting go of my theory. No, I like your theory. I want it to be true. Okay. So the end of the film, it, Bridget sadly has to kill Ginger. I don't think she right? even means to, right? Like she sort of does, but. Yeah, it's, it's. She gets pounced upon and the knife is in there and yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, you know, um, it's a sad ending and it ends pretty abruptly after that. Yeah, it just, it just there was just ads and then credits. Would you be interested in seeing part two? Yeah. Totally. What about part three? I OK, now we're getting into these commitments here. I don't know why, <laughs> what. What are you getting at? No, part three is a prequel sort of. Interesting. And puts an entire new spin on the mythology, in my opinion. So they got something going mm-hmm. in part one and two. They're they're pretty back to back, as I recall. Um, but then three is like in the eighteen hundreds. Wait, what? With Ginger and Bridget. What? Yeah, it's Ginger snaps back the beginning, and they shot two and three back to back, so they knew what they were doing. Wow, they did. They did the sequel and then the period piece back to back. Just a completely bonkers out way out there period piece. Wow. What do you think worked most in the movie? I'm going to say uh, you're probably going to follow us up with what I think worked least in this movie. And it's the same answer for me. Okay. Sorry to ruin a format, but that werewolf uh, costume <laughs> Was both good and bad. <laughs> okay. There, there was some really good, like, puppetry or animatronic kind of stuff where they had, like, the rubber suits or whatever was going on with the, the makeup. And it would, like, you know, make the, the snarl look cool or the eyebrows go in ways. It was pretty great. Um, and those shots were fantastic. And you see sometimes the spine come up like you'll see in a werewolf movie. That stuff was cool and all that stuff. And then sometimes there's just definitely a dude in a rubber suit that's jumping around <laughs> and yeah. and while i enjoyed that for ironic reasons 
uh, it, it did take me out of what was going on in the actual movie. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay, so that's fair. So that's how I feel. What about you, Jay? What What do you think worked best and least? Um, I think the actresses and their performances mm-hmm. and their relationship worked the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know they even played sisters again later, um, in a different film. Um, so in the tone of the movie, it made mm-hmm. the whole thing made me want to know more about the actual mythology of the werewolves because there's very little, and they debunk quickly a lot of common, um, a, a, lot, a lot of common like tropes with. Oh yeah. With werewolves. Like the silver, right? Wasn't that a, yeah, a that, bit? Not a thing. Like that, werewolves can just die. I yeah. Mean, they, they you just, just get hit die. by a van and you're dead. Yeah. And the, even the idea of changing back and forth is really mm. like, it's sort of just like once you change, you're a werewolf, you're a wolf now, um, or a thing. Um, so, so I thought all that worked well. The again, I, I'm sticking with the mom thing. I wanted to see at least something <laughs> more from that. And her exit from the movie, um, you know, left me wanting a little bit more. Agreed. But, yeah, uh, it was it was a bit abrupt. But yeah, so I'd say that for me worked at least. But overall, I I, I enjoyed it. Rating time. I would like for you to rate this film. One to one hundred thick syrupy voluminous God, discharges, oh please. Boy, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a lot of words to say. Um, Here, I'll say it again: thick syrupy voluminous discharges. Okay, okay. I mean, it's it it it's genuinely a well done movie. the The script is tight. The acting's good. If you like seeing someone that. <laughs> A weird rubber skin suit jump around and it doesn't happen all that often there's just a couple shots where you know that's how they had to do it and it's just yeah that's what it was <laughs> it's... i mean nowadays it'd be terrible cg so i'll, I'll exactly take it. i'll tell i'll take it i'll take it yeah. um yeah no great i i think people should watch it it's a fun movie it's it's cool it, it definitely like uh there's a whole bunch of essays out there about about how this subverts like the whole male dominated dominated horror scene and stuff like that. How how this um, female monster isn't like your standard uh, hopeless woman or a broken woman or all these other tropes that like movies like Carrie and The Exorcist and all that kind of stuff have like made mm-hmm. women villains in horror movies be. Um, and this is just. She got bit by a fucking werewolf, man, and now she's a monster. And like it's it's fucking great. Um so that's cool if you like stuff like that. And if you don't, fuck you. <laughs> but uh I fuck it, man. 89. It's fun. It's a good movie. I think it's really good and people should check it out. It's a classic for a reason. Yep. What about you, Jay? I think we agree pretty much across the board here, uh, when it comes to this one. Uh I Felt like this would be a, a strong one, um, but yeah, I, I like, I like the bonds, I like the characters, plot, tone, all that stuff. Um, I just wish I would have seen it earlier. Oh, same. So, yeah, there was a lot of my life where I was ginger snaps less. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's no way to be. But yeah, I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll just make it easy, Mike. I'm going to I'm gonna match you. 89. Nice. Dick Syrupy Voluminous Discharges. Nice. I think it's a great movie. Yeah. Jay, Jay, if you don't mind, can I do a second rating? I would like to rate Us. Oh, yes, absolutely. I don't know where you're going with it, but let's see. I, I think you and I are a 39 because we hadn't watched it till now. And that's my rating. <laughs> well, that's going to be a fun graphic for me to make. Thank you. Ah, sorry. <laughs> for the website. Well, Mike, what are your Halloween plans for the rest of the night? Does it involve that Malort? Oh, uh, this thing? Now there it goes. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> and, uh, oh, you know, another one of these. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm going to... Well, there's not going to be any kids walking around. This is going to be the most haunting Halloween possible. Just, just empty streets. Yeah. Uh, howling dogs. Booing ghosts. Uh, Trumpers. 
Tr- well, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that shit. <laughs> Can you imagine just fucking like the only kids that are out are like MAGA kids and shit? Uh, I, I can't imagine that. Yeah. Uh, vaccines. Anyway. Um, Let's hand them out instead of candy. <laughs> Canceling okay. Halloween's a false flag. What are we doing? Where are we turning this into? Anyway, yeah, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this right now. I no. want to eat more. I'm going to eat some more candy. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to drink some. Pile. I'm going to so drink some beer and hang out. You guys are you're getting the, the rattling of the bag. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. This makes me feel better. Mm, yeah, just. just We're going to keep eating it. Whatever it takes to make yourself feel better, just go ahead and do it. Yep. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. This is fun, Jay. This was fun, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, JJ, one more second. What? Can you zoom on, zoom in on me? Yeah. No, a little closer. Okay. Just a little closer. Mm. What are you going to do? Get here. Get here. All right. Boo. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! It's going to be fun for all our listeners on the podcast to hear you say, zoom in on me. Oh, uh, damn it. Uh, I did it. I was like, that won't be too hard. That'll be an easy, like, zoom in a couple things at the end. That won't be hard. Well, just in case I use all of this and more. Happy Halloween, everybody. Oh, Bye. hey, my head fell off. Bye. <laughs>